Hi guys, it's me Toby Tamuring, and today I'll show you how to digitalize your sketches in Photoshop. This is a two-part series. In this video, I show you how to make the line art, and part two is how to color in Photoshop. I will be using the program Photoshop, but if you don't have that, you can try using GIMP, which is a free program, and it's very similar to Photoshop, and I'll have more details at the end of the video. Toby Tamuring. So open up Photoshop. Okay, once the program is up, go over to the top and find the word file. Then you're going to see the word open, click on that one, and then a prompt will pop up asking you where your file is. You can double click on the image or you can just click the open button. Alright, so anytime you get an image and open it in Photoshop, it will be locked. So to unlock it, simply double click on the image layer and then a prompt pops up and you can rename the layer. I just do that later so I just hit OK. And now your layer is unlocked and we can get to work. Now let's crop the image since we only need the chibi boy. So go over to the toolbar and find the rectangular marquee tool. Decide what you want to stay, then make the rectangle around it. Once your image is engulfed by the rectangle, let go and you have your selection. Then go over to the top and click on image. Then go down to crop and click on it. And now your image is just of the chibi boy. To easily navigate around your drawing when you are zooming in for detail, I use the navigator panel. If you don't have that up, don't sweat. Just go over to Window and then click on Navigator. It's just that easy. Now make a new layer since we want our line art to be on a different layer than our original sketch. Also make sure it's above the sketch layer. Okay, now let's get our tool ready. The tool we will be using is called the Pen Tool. So I want this image to be bigger so I can use it for other things in the future that might need a bigger image than what I have already. So go over to the top, click on image, and then click on image size. Before we type anything, make sure all of these checkboxes are checked in, and that way you don't accidentally distort your image. And also, I like to change its resolution to around 300, then go over to the width and change it to a pretty large number. Uh, if you have a slower computer, I suggest 2500 or 3000. If you have a faster one, I suggest 5000 or 6000. Uh, so then hit OK and boom, you have a huge image. And this is kind of hard to see at 100%. So let's zoom out a bit with our navigator. So the navigator is super awesome for quickly zooming out, zooming in, and actually getting an overall view of the image. Okay, so you guys can see what I'm doing a little easier. I'm going to make the sketch a bit lighter by going to image, then hitting adjustments and clicking on hue and saturation. Alright, now it's time for business. Make sure you have the pen tool selected and that you are on a layer on top of the sketch layer. First thing we are going to do is make points on our drawing. Pick places where there will be a sharp point and then place them by clicking on that spot. And all of these points together are called a path. At first it'll look super weird, but don't worry, we'll fix it up and it'll look super normal. Now go over to where the pen tool is and switch over to the add anchor point tool. This allows us to add curves to our original path. Now click on a point on your path where your drawing needs to have a curve. Let go and that's your anchor point. Now to make it curvy, click on that point you just made and drag it to wherever you want. It can go wherever you like, but we want it to follow the original sketch, so I'll place this over here. Now his cheek still looks a little funny, we will need to add another anchor point. Okay, so I'm going to place this point here and then I'll click and drag it over here and let go to place it. So say you have a really fine curve, you can adjust the anchor points even more by moving around the two points either side of the anchor point. I'm just going to adjust it a little so the line follows the original sketch. Now let's add the other anchor points to smooth out this path to our liking. And now we've completed the path. Then go over to the brush tool and select the size. We don't want it to be too big and we don't want it to be too small. Pick a size you like and then make sure the hardness is at complete 100%. Also make sure the opacity is set to 100% or the line art will seem kind of translucent. Okay, now head over to the layers panel and then go over to the path panel. This work path contains the path we just created. Now head over to the stroke path with brush button and click on it. And this is the first method of making a line art. It's simple, quick, yet it lacks a little pizzazz in my opinion. So I'll show you how to make this an even cooler path. Now on your keyboard, hit CTRL plus the letter Z to go back one step. If the stroke color is still there, then hit CTRL plus ALT and the letter Z. Keep hitting the three buttons until the stroke color is gone. This is a very handy keyboard shortcut that will save you tons of time in the future. So go back and grab your pen tool. And what we are going to do is add more sharp points with the pen tool to the existing path. You can enter the path by clicking with the pen tool on the start or ending point of the path. 
Now that we are on the same path again, we need to add more points, so we can make this tube-like path around the original sketch. So we're pretty much going to add points to the same spot, but with some distance from the original. But make sure to close off the points this time, we need a tube-like path. Now we have this really weird shape again. It might get a little confusing, but just take it at one point at a time and I'll clear up very soon. So hop back onto the Add Anchor Point tool and add anchor points to places that need curves and this time we're going to make the line follow the other end of the original sketch. Okay, now we have this tube-like path around the original drawing. This is perfect. And now we are going to head over back to the path panel and click on Fill Path with Foreground Color. And Eureka! We have this super cool, super awesome line art. Now click on Add New Layer so that the path isn't selected and you can see it a bit better. ta da 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 Isn't it cool? I really like this method of making line arts. It takes a little bit longer, but it is so much cooler than the original method. Now to make sure we don't lose our path in case we need it in the future, simply double click on the work path and hit OK. See, any path that you make in the work path will be overridden if you start a new path. So I always make sure to hit new layer when I start a new path. Cool, now I'll make sure that I'm in the new path layer and start making the hair. We will follow the same concept we did for the head and apply it for the hair. The hair is a bit easier since it's pointy and there are a lot more points and less work with anchor points. So I place all of my points at one time, then I use the anchor point to adjust them. You can leave them without anchor points, but honestly, the hair looks a lot better with a little curve to it. After you get the hang of it, you'll be much faster and it'll seem really easy where to place the points and add anchor points to it. But it does take a little time, so don't be discouraged if you don't know exactly where to put them at the beginning. I'm just going to speed a little bit of this up so you guys don't wait here too long to see the results. Also, make sure to save often. Go over to the top and click on File, and then select Save. Also, make sure it's a .psd file. This means you can enter it again and work on it more. If you accidentally select the .png file and try to open it, there will no longer be any other layers and you can't separate the layers without tons of work. Now name your file, and then a prompt appears. So you're just going to want to hit OK. This is just basically asking you that if you don't have that check mark selected that it might not be able to read this on a older version of Photoshop, on a newer version of Photoshop. So I just like having the check mark on there because it's just easier and it works out for me in the end. <laughs> now you have your file saved, you can take a break and exit out and open it whenever you're ready to work on it again. Okay, so sometimes you want the path to be one piece so it's easy, but some parts of the filling you want to erase some bits of it. So I suggest going to the layer panel and adding a new layer and then go back to the path panel and then click on the fill path with foreground color. Then later on you can go to that layer and erase the bits that you didn't want without having to worry about erasing some of the other parts of the hair because it's made on a completely separate layer. So I mean that's what I do all the time. Um, you don't have to do this, you can just leave it the way it is, or you can do two pieces of path line art, but it really does save you time to do just one, and then erase the bits you don't want later on. So, it's up to you guys which one you guys want to use. Now it's time to do the eyeballs. To save time and make sure they're a nice round shape, I use the ellipse tool. The ellipse tool creates a round oval or a circle path that you can fill or stroke, just like a normal path. Make sure to do a separate layer for the eyeball. That way, if you need to rotate the shape, it won't rotate anything else but what's on that layer. Match it up with the original sketch as best as you can. This eyeball needs to be tilted slightly, so I'll fill in the oval. And then I'll go to the top, hit edit, and then click on the free transform. Free transform allows you to move anything around in that particular layer. Now I'll tilt the eyeball slightly, and then do the other eye. This side really didn't need to be tilted, so I left it just as it is. So that completes the techniques for this tutorial. You now have a super clean, cool line art. You can leave it as it is or make it even more stunning and color it. Be sure to check out my next tutorial on how to color in Photoshop. In that video, you'll see how I color with both the pen and brush tool. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And if you don't have Photoshop and you still want to try this out, don't worry, there's a great open source program called GIMP. It's got the basic tools that Photoshop has and you'll be able to use this technique in GIMP. The buttons might be in different places, but when you find them, you'll still be able to make awesome line arts. 
Great thing about GIMP, it also allows you to save and open .psd files, which are editable Photoshop files. Later on in the future, I'll make a tutorial just for GIMP, that way it'll be easier to follow. And I'll have a link in the description bar for GIMP's official website where you can download the program for free. Transition Music by Tan Music. You can visit them at www.tanmusic.com. Background Music by Kevin McLeod. And you can visit him at www.incomputech.com. Programs used to edit the video are Adobe Premiere Pro CS5 and Adobe Photoshop CS5. Equipment used are an Audio-Technica 2020 USB microphone and the Canon Rebel T1i DSLR with a 50mm macro lens. 